my honor to give a talk uh, today, you know, uh, about our studies. Uh, the title is, uh, it's a building an in vitro matrix microenvironment to facilitate adult stem cells cartilage regeneration. So today uh, I would like to talk about uh, two sections. Uh, the first one is uh, decellularized uh, extracellular matrix, uh, rejuvenate adult stem cell proliferation and uh, differentiation. These sections uh, serve as a foundation for the today's talk. And uh, another, the second and third one uh, are two uh, recent studies. We, we just finished it. And uh, these, uh, the data from these two studies can support the first uh, uh, sections. So there's no conflict of interest. Uh, tissue engineering is a, a promising approach you know, for tissue regeneration including uh, cell uh, engineering and material engineering, process engineering. And our study is more focused on the stem cells, how, uh, how to use stem cell to treat the patients. But the stem cell we isolate from the body has limited uh, amount. So we need to do uh, extensive uh, ex vivo expansion uh, to get large quantity of stem cells for tissue regenerations. Unfortunately, uh, during the ex vivo expansion, the less stem cells uh, tend to be, become senescent. So, uh, cell senescent uh, uh, can be, uh, be because of the ex vivo expansion, or maybe come from the donor. You know, they have a old age, may cause the cell senescence, and a disease, trauma, or can cause the uh, cell senescence, and uh, here is that uh, we list uh, uh, the, the signal pathways uh, cell citizen associate, you know, in uh, chondrogenic differentiation. And in our previous uh, review articles, we also discussed the uh, uh, extracellular matrix changes. Some uh, matrix proteins might increase, some might decrease, and also biomechanic properties of the tissue also uh, changes. So uh, understanding the influence of senescence cell on cell matrix interaction can benefit tissue and regeneration. Uh, this uh, slide shows uh, this is a uh, 2D uh, artificial uh, tissue cartridge flasks. When the cells, we normally use uh, cells come from the synovial tissue, we call the SDSC. And going on the 2D uh, artif uh, artificial uh, substrate, the cell morphology became uh, enlarged and the uh, cell proliferation rate from passage three to passage four and to passage five decreased. So in the meantime, the expanded cells lose their uh, differentiation capacities. For example, uh, we use the uh, uh, expanded cells to make the planets and the growing in chondrogenic induction medium. Uh, that's from passage three SDSCs and here is a PSG4 uh, five SDSAs. So you can see very clearly that we use a sapling O staining and the Asian blue staining for GAG and immune staining for collagen type two. You can see uh, the, all the, the panel size decrease and uh, also the P5 SDSC uh, uh, lose their differentiation capacities. Uh, that's because uh, this is artificial environment and uh, the stem cell in the body, they usually surrounded by extracellular matrix. Also some soluble factors like growth factors or maybe some uh, uh, low oxygen environment, all these contribute to the stem cell camp, uh, contribute to a niche for stem cell reside. For example, yes, uh, very, um, the very, uh, 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 PRP, platelet rich plasma therapy, is very popular because these proteins can rejuvenate stem cell for, for treatment. So today I'm not going to talk about the PRP, but uh, we want to talk about extracellular matrix. Uh, we call ECM, also we call the decellularized extracellular matrix. Uh, so the background is, uh, is a more it's a ECM deposit by SDSC. Uh, after that, we use the uh, chemical approach you know, to remove the cells, only keep the ECM. 
and uh, use the immune staining uh, for collagen type one, you can see the 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 green color uh, actually shows the collagen type one expressions, and this is a three D structures. So our strategies now try to use the stem cell isolate from appropriate tissues, then use this stem cell to deposit matrix and uh, put the patient's stem cells on this matrix and grow to yield a large quantity of stem cells. And use this stem cell to make cartilage to repair cartilage defects. Uh, so um, we well summarized, you know, the DECM rejuvenation on stem cells and for their proliferation and uh, differentiation capacities in the past review articles. What we want to, what our conclusion is that DECM can rejuvenate adult stem cell proliferation and differentiation. Uh, more than hundreds of little riches uh, or suggest the adult stem cells from different tissues, they might have different capacity now for lineage differentiation. That, that means a tissue specific stem cell now can prefer a lineage specific tissue regeneration. For example, this, uh, uh, here are three different tissues. The first one, adipose uh, tissue, we can get the adipose derived stem cells and the muscle tissue, we can get the muscle derived stem cells. Synovian tissue, we can get the synovian derived stem cell and bone marrow tissue, we can get the bone marrow stroma cells. So this is a heat map. You can see the, the red shows the highest uh, differentiation potential and the blue shows the uh, lowest uh, differential capacity. So here I want to point out SDSC has the highest chondrogenesis uh, differentiation potentials and the BMSC has a higher different potential to develop into a bone. So, uh, so in the first sections, I want to use the two studies, you know, to uh, introduce uh, the ECM and the stem cell rejuvenation. The first one is to uh, use the uh, synovial derived stem cells. We call it a tissue specific for chondrogenesis and the bone marrow stroma cells is for osteoendochondral bone formation. So that if the stem cell growing on tissue cartridge flasks, 2D now, um, artificial environment, you can see the cell shape become enlarged and the scanning electron microscope shows that cell are uh, uh, arranged very randomly. But the, if you grow the cells on the ECM, you can see the cell become fibroblast shape and also shining and arranged very well. And uh, when you look at the size of the uh, uh, ECM, uh, actually that's the nano structured fibers tissues. And because we want to use the ECM to expand the stem cells for chondrogenic differentiation, so we would like to see if the ECM has any components of the cartilage uh, proteins. So we use the sampling load staining for GAG and the immune staining for collagen 1, 2, and 10. So we found this ECM deposit by SDSC only pro, uh, uh, deposit uh, collagen type of one. And uh, we then we compare the stem cell growing on tissue cartridge flasks or uh, going on ECM. You can see very clearly ECM expanded cells, you can uh, dramatically increase their proliferation rate. And uh, here is a picture as we already showed before, P3 SDS says if you you know, expand two for two more passages on tissue cartridge flasks, the stem cell will lose their differentiation capacity. So how about if we bring on ECM for two more passages? So very clearly you can see the ECM expanded SDSCs has a very strong gag and the collagen type 2. That's the two typical markers for chondro chondrogenesis. And we also did the biochemical analysis and the real-time PCR for agrican and the collagen type 2, also for collagen type 10. And uh, if very uh, consistent with the histology data, you can see the if growing on tissue cartridge flask for two more passages, the SDSCs where has a pretty lower 
chondrogenic marker gene expression. But going on ECM, it has very higher uh, chondrogenic marker expression. Very interesting, if we look at the collagen type 10, that's a hypertrophic markers, we can see ECM expanded cells also has a lower collagen type 10 expression. That's indicated the ECM expanded SDSC might be uh, an ideal cell source for cardi articular cartilage regeneration. To confirm this, we, we have done the osteogenic induction for, for the SDSC expanded on tissue cartilage flask or maybe on ECM. So the, here is the adhesion red as standing for osteocalcin, for, os, uh, for, uh, for calcium, for, for uh, osteogenic matrix calcium. And we also get the real-time PCR shows ECM expanded cells has lower osteocalcin and SPB1, two typical markers for osteogenic differentiation. So that's indicate, that's confirmed the SPSC, it's a tissue specific stem cell for chondrogenesis. Another stem cell I just mentioned, it's called BMSC, bone marrow strong cell. We did the same work, uh, growing the SDSC on tissue card flasks, megapanids, and also growing on PMSC on the ECM and megapanids. You can see ECM expanded PMSC has a strong chondrogenic uh, differentiation. So also confirmed by quantitative data, use the biochemical analysis for GAG and uh, for collagen type 2. Also, we try to look at the collagen type 10 the ECM expanded uh, BMSC has a strong uh, chondrogenic marker expression. But in the meantime, you can see ECM expanded cells has a higher hypertrophy uh, collagen type 10 expression. I mean, indicate that uh, BMSC, e ECM expanded uh, BMSC might not be an ideal stem cells for articular cartilage because this articular cartilage is not like transient, it's not permanent cartilage they're pretty easy to become a bone. So uh, in order to uh, confirm this, we did the osteo induction. Uh, and uh, you can see adhesion red staining and alkaline phosphate staining. You know, uh, then we did the quantitative quantitation for these two staining and uh, for the biochemical analysis, you can see ECM expanded the PMSC has a strong osteogenic markers. So that means the BMSC may not be an ideal uh, stem cell for control cartilage regeneration, but maybe it's a good idea, uh, stem cell for bone formation. So here's the slide shows uh, before we, you will use ascorbic acid to make the ECM to add to the uh, cell cartilage medium and uh, net the cells to deposit matrix, then remove the cells and uh, then grow the stem cell on the uh, DECM or on the tissue cartridge flask without ECM. But as we know, the matrix environment, not only matrix, also they have some soluble factors or maybe some oxygen, uh, different oxygen concentrations. So uh, so we, we would like, to, this study, we would like to see if uh, all these factors can influence the, uh, the, the stem cell uh, chondrogenic differentiation. So then we, before we started that, we grew the cells in either normal oxygen, 21% uh, oxygen, or maybe no oxygen, 5% oxygen. So you cannot see much difference in cell morph morphology. But when you combine with the FGF2, that's, uh, that's called basic uh, fibroblast growth factor. So you can see the cell became tiny and shiny. And uh, when you combine with the ECM, they even became largely expanded. So then we did the quantitative, quantitative uh, analysis. We can find this is shows the million cells in one T175 flaskers. So we start with a 3,000 cells per centimeter square. So that's T175 is a 0 0.53 million cells. When we grew in the cells on the tissue cartridge flask for one week, you can you only can get less than 1.5 million cells. But the low oxygen doesn't change a lot for the uh, cell amount. But when you put the FGF2, they can 
automatically increase their numbers. ECM has 18 million shares. If you put all these three factors together, you can get uh, almost 50 million in only 175 T, T175 tissue cartridge flasks. So that's a large quantity of stem cells. But we want to grow these stem cells for tissue regeneration. So we were wondering if this stem cell still has the differentiating capacities after. Um, so we use a painted cartridge and uh, after two weeks cartridge in chondrogenic medium, we use the supplemental action blue staining for GAG, immunostaining for collagen two and collagen one. So normal oxygen, low oxygen, you cannot see much difference from size, from the color. But when you combine with FGF2, they totally change the color and size. And growing up with ECM, they dramatically increase the gag, you know, gag, uh, gag calling two, less calling type one. Uh, we did the biochemical analysis to show the DNA ratio at day 14, adjust by day zero. This data shows that because each cell has a certain DNA amount. So we use the DNA changes to indicate the cell number changes. So this DNA ratio uh, indicates the cell viability in the panic card system. So compared to the plastic group, you know, or EC and FGF group has a higher uh, cell viability. And uh, that's a ratio of GAC to DNA. That's what we call chondrogenic index. So you can see very high chondrogenic index in FGF and uh, uh, combined with uh, low oxygen, combined with the uh, ECM. So here is uh, the cell ECM information. But many people may not familiar with the cell ECM, but they heard about the tissue ECM, DECM, because the tissue DECM normally uh, are used for tissue regeneration, serve as a scaffold. So here is a slide, you know, we try to compare what's the difference between the DECM and the uh, uh, cell DECM and tissue DECM. If you look at the morphology of the DECM, cell matrix is a nanostructured and fibrous, uh, uh, and the, the tissue matrix uh, come from the cartilage tissue, that's a sponge shape. And uh, when you look, use the staining, you can see the cell ECM has the collagen one expression, but tissue matrix, cardiac tissue matrix has GAG and a collagen type two expression. When you grow the stem cell on the two matrix, you can see cell matrix can promote cell become tiny and also glistening. That means, you know, cell has a higher differentiating potential. But tissue metrics can directly promote the stem cell differentiation because that's the stem cell growing on the cartilage uh, tissue matrix. So you can see the stem cell became, became a chondrocyte like shape. So the conclusion is that cell matrix can pro in, uh, induce the proliferation and the differentiating capacity. But uh, the tissue matrix can directly induce that proliferation. So more information has been used. Uh, you can find from our recent review articles, you know, to summarize what's the similarity and uh, discrepancy between these two uh, DECM. So here's a summary for the first section. It's a cell senescence is a challenge for stem cell based tissue regeneration but the DECN can provide a new approach now to produce a large quantity of stem cell with higher differentiation capacities. The second one is the matrix, the microenvironment, including low oxygen and growth factors is critical for stem cell proliferation and differentiation. Adult stem cells isolate from different tissue now have a unique now ability now for differentiation toward a specific tissue lineage and the cell matrix Tissue metrics are different in inducing stem cell proliferation and differentiation. So here is the second section, uh, because in the first section we mentioned, you know, different tissue may uh, have different stem cell for a uh, lineage specific differentiation. So we want to uh, do another studies to uh, to support these uh, conclusions. 
So we use the adult stem cell, uh, uh, adipose stem cell from different locations. One location is from infrapatellar fat pad, it's next to the knee joints. Another fat pattern come from the subcutaneous adipose tissues. So we isolate stem cell from these two tissues. And uh, here is the, the summarized, you know, for this the development of these uh, two adipose tissue. Uh, what's, the, what's the relationship of uh, during the development? So we want to look at the determine deep on a dependent chondrogenic potential of adipose stem cells. So in other words, now, we, we believe stem cell fate was determined by local niche environment. So for these studies, we use uh, four, uh, four uh, rabbits, you know, to do the uh, donor matrix studies. You can see subcutaneous adipose uh, stem cells and uh, infrapotential fat based stem cells. Two stem cells has very close cell morphologies. But when you look at CD146, that's a surface markers indicate uh, for chondrogenic differentiation capacities. IPFSC has a high expression. But when you look at the population dumping time and EDU, you can see SCASC, that's the subcutaneous adipose stem cells, you know, has a higher potential. And uh, when you use a real time PCR to look at the stem list uh, genes, Nanog, Rex1, Nestin, and uh, SOX2, and uh, P, and the uh, Celesense genes, uh, P21, and uh, P53, uh, there's not much difference. When you look at the transcription factors for three different lineages, one lineage is uh, adipogenesis. That's a PPR gamma is a six uh, transcription for, for adipogenesis. Rank two is uh, transcription factor factors for osteogenesis and SOX9 is uh, transcription factors for chondrogenesis. You can see IPFSC has a strong SOX9 expression. So after chondrogenic induction, you can see the difference in SOX9 is still, still maintained. But IPFSC has a lower PPR gamma. That means they become purely SOX9 expression, purely chondrogenic attitude cartilage. And uh, another one, if you do adipogenic induction, you can see the PPR gamma difference even become large. That means SCSC has a higher expression of PPR gamma than IPFSC. And uh, when you do osteogenic induction, uh, very interesting, SOX9 uh, difference, they decrease, but still, you know, has significant difference and the PPR gamma, the IPFSC increase. So here, so we would like to know, so that's a transcription factors. How about the differentiation factors? So that's uh, before induction and after induction, chondrogenic induction, you can see IPFSC uh, has a higher chondrogenic differentiation compared to donor matched and SCSC. For Edipo, you can see very clearly um, SCSC has a higher adipogenic market gene expressions than IPFSC, not only Support by real time PCR, also support by Western blot. In osteogenic induction, you cannot see much difference. So we, and uh, we have done uh, protein mix and RNA sequencing and uh, try to find what's going on and uh, what mechanism and this uh, difference. So because of the time limitation, so we only present some of the RNA sequencing uh, data here. And uh, the data, we look at the Hox gene family, that's a conservative gene family in development. So we use the SCS, if SCS data, you know, large than IPFSC, the data, we, the, the gene will show the blue colors. If IPFSC is large, then shoot red colors. You can see 
IPFSC has a very strong Hox P gene expression only in IPFSC or preference in IPFSC. This Hox, Hox P gene uh, families has a very close relationship with the cartilage development. And uh, some, but the, the Hox A, like three, five, four, five, six, all these were closely related to the adipogenesis preference expressing SCSC. So it's for the T-box gene family. It's the same, you can say T-box 5, 15 and 18 preference expressed in IPFSC. They are all closely related to mean formation. TBX1, for example, you know, it's a collective, has a close relation to adipogenesis, but express highly expressing SCSC. Uh, it's a basement membrane, also, you know, laminin and the perlican, preference in IPFSC and the nidogen 2 and the collagen 2, 4 in SCSC. AQP genes, actually, this genes uh, family is very uh, unique because this gene family is uh, the function is to try to transport the water uh, into the cells. So that gene family also calls the uh, uh, the, the plumbing system for cells. So this function is very important for, con for cartilage uh, functionality. And uh, very interesting, AQP genes families exclusively uh, expressed in IPFSC. Then we look at the adipogenetic related genes. We can find a lot of adipogenetic related genes. So here is a P value, uh, you know, adjust P value. If shows green, means you know favor adipogenesis. You can see most of the uh, the adipogenetic related genes ex uh, highly expressing SCSC favor adipogenesis. But only some of the adipogenetic related genes favor uh, favor adipogenesis, uh, highly expressing IPFSC. So then we look at the chondrogenic related genes. Very interesting. Uh, to our knowledge, we find all the chondrogenic related genes preference expressed in uh, IPFSC uh, rather than uh, SCSC. That means, you know, uh, and the TGA beta family, you know, TGA beta one, two, three, and the latent, uh, latent uh, TGA beta binding protein one, or very important for, for chondrogenesis and the highly ex expressing IPFSC. And the SOX, uh, SOX gene families, 5, 6, 9, 11, it's the same story. And the uh, LOX gene family, uh, the, actually this gene, uh, uh, the responsibility for this gene is try to, uh, to synthesize the uh, collagens. You know, collagens is very important for cartilage and uh, you know, it's very interesting. You can see NOX gene families highly expressing IPFSC. So in summary, it's a SCSC and a donor matched IPFSC exhibit significant difference in genetic code at both mRNA and the protein levels, which might be responsible for deeper dependent differentiating preference of adipose stem cells. So this uh, um, provides the evidence to support the a tissue specific stem cells prefer ninja specific differentiation in another way. So more detailed information uh, you can find from our recent publications. And uh, our previous studies also show that ECN, if ECN deposited by young stem cells can promote or can rejuvenate adult stem cell uh, chondrogenic potential. However, most of the patients actually it's uh, the, the, they are pretty old and their stem cell is old. So if you use, use a, uh, EC, the older stem cell deposit matrix might, be, might not be benefit for adult stem cell rejuvenation. So we try to figure a way to solve this problem. You might say, you know, you, you, might, you can use the young and hair cells from anogenic sources or maybe from xenogenic sources, but th that's uh, ECM might cause some uh, immune issues. 
So our approach is we, we, we combine. One is the ECM, one is the cell immortalization. Uh, because these two factors can modulate adult stem cell fate. So we have three groups in these studies. Uh, uh, NVC is a long virus control group. NTC, low target gene, uh, low target uh, control group. Uh, only trans transduction with GFP, green uh, fluorescence proteins genes. And uh, uh, the study group has SV40 groups. You can see pacify and a, a late, a early passage and a late passage, passage 50. So our demonstration in SV40, uh, uh, this PCR data, SV40 group has a strong SV40 expression. When you look at the cell proliferation, that data shows uh, accumulated uh, population dumping numbers. So two control groups almost overlap. But as with uh, 40 groups has a strong uh, uh, population dumping numbers from P3 to P15. Uh, because uh, SV40 is a cancer gene, it might cause some tumor. So we, after we transduce with the SV40, we, we did the carrier type analysis. And we found SV40 transduced cells did have 5% uh, abnormal chromosome. So we, 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 then we, we try to look at if the SV40 uh, transduced cells has the uh, high or lower chondrogenic capacities. So we use a chondrogenic induction medium and encourage the tissue uh, cell panels for two or for two weeks in chondrogenic induction medium. So you can see that the SV40 groups has the lowest panel size and it has a very weak staining for GAG and a collagen type 2, two typical markers for chondrogenesis. This uh, can be seen in passive 5 and passive 15. And we did the real-time PCR for SOX9, collagen 2, and the aggregate. Uh, from different passages, R shows that SV40 transduced cells has a lower chondrogenic differentiation. Then we look at the adipogenic capacities, use the adipogenic induction medium, and uh, we will see the SV40 transduced the stem cells has a higher potential to develop adipose cells. That's the Western blood show LPL and uh, use oil red O standing for lipids. So you can see very clearly SV40 has a stronger expression of the uh, adipose uh, lipids. Uh, this also uh, demonstrated uh, by the TechMind real-time PCR data, you know, for LPLC, PPR5, PPR gamma. R shows uh, ECM uh, SV40 transduced cells has high expression for uh, adipogenic marker genes. Because uh, we try to use the SV40 transduce into the older uh, the patients, the older patients, the stem cells, and uh, try to immortalized cells and they use these immortalized cells to deposit the matrix, then expanded the adult stem cell uh, proliferation and the differentiation. So uh, so we did the uh, DECM expansion studies. Uh, basically use the P15 IPFSC. This is pretty old stem cells growing on tissue culture flask that's the control group here. And our DECM deposit by younger stem cells, we call CP5. Older stem cells, PSG5, uh, 15, it's, uh, we call CP15. If, uh, if the SV40 immortalize the P5 in uh, stem cells, we call SV5. And uh, uh, SV40 immortalize uh, P15, uh, we call SP15 for one passages. 
you can see TECM expanded cells, you know, has a higher proliferating capacities from the cell morphologies. But when you do the EPU staining and uh, uh, cell proliferation rates, you can see ECM expanded cells, you know, four groups has a higher proliferation rate. And the SV40 groups uh, has a, a SV40 transduced cell deposit matrix groups has a, can produce, uh, can expand a, a large quantity of stem cells compared to uh, corresponding uh, Long SV40 uh, transduced. Excuse me, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I think we are running out of the time. Please, I'm so sorry. And uh, for the chondrogenic induction, then we we did the you know the in chondro in uh, we 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 put the expanded cells in uh, in chondrogenic induction medium uh, for two weeks. You can see very clearly uh, this control group or ECM groups higher than control group. And for ECM, CP5 is higher, and uh, but CP15, that's older member uh, ECM cannot rejuvenate much. But SV40, SV40 in transducing CP5 or SV4 transfer, so uh, SP15, uh, you can see, you know, where, especially for SP15 groups. And the differentiation, uh, we, we did the real time PCR, you can see very clearly. Uh, that's a uh, compare, you know, C, uh, CP5 and CP15, and uh, CP5 and SP5 and uh, CP15 and uh, SP15. So the conclusion is that DECM deposit by SV40 immortalized cells increase old uh, stem cell and chondrogenic potentials. For adipose induction, you can see uh, oil real staining, not much difference between among groups, but Western blood, you can see ECM groups has less LPR expression. But real-time PCR, you know, studies you can see, you know, ECM expanded cells, uh, you know, has a lower uh, uh, adipogenic mark gene expression. So the ECM deposit by SV40 more says cells decrease old cells adipogenic potential. So uh, here is the last slides. You know, we uh, try to understand what's going on, what makes this happen. So we did the immunostaining for three typical matrix uh, proteins. It's an aminine and uh, fibrolectin and collagen 4. So you can see uh, all SV40 uh, transduced groups has a higher laminin and uh, collagen 4 and uh, some, you know, it's fibrolectins. So we did the uh, protein mix analysis. You can see very clearly, you know, oh, here it's not very clear, you know, it's like uh, S15E groups, you know, has a higher basement membrane compared to the other groups. and uh, S why you still can see some. So if you see where very clearly, you know, laminin beta one, you know, you can laminin, you know, the SV40, you know, and also this is a uh, collagen four and the fibrolectins. So uh, after ECM expansion, you can see very interesting expanded cells. Uh, the the tissue culture for plastic expanded cells has higher facet collagens, uh, typical for collagen 12 and collagen uh, 14. And uh, when we use the chondrogenic induction medium to stimulate the cells, we can, after two, two weeks of stimulation, we can see very interesting that S15P group has a higher FSCT collagens. Uh, compared to the other groups. So this trend very similar to the uh, chondrogenic marketing expressions. So here is a summary and uh, SV40 and uh, immortalized IPFSC exhibit significant high capacity in, in proliferation, decreased chondrogenic potential, but increased adipogenic capacity. And the DECN deposit by SV40 immortalized the IPFSC in, uh, increased high capacity in IPFSC proliferation capacity and a reverse high passion IPFSC differentiating preference in terms of uh, increasing chondrogenic but decreasing the adipogenic differentiation. So we need to uh, pay attention. Um, I, need, I want to uh, highlight is the significance of basic membrane proteins and the first collagen in matrix microenvironment and the stem cell chondrogenesis respectively needs to be determined in future studies. So these studies is still ongoing 
And uh, DECM combined with their immortalization can be a potential approach for uh, autologous stem cell based uh, tissue regeneration. So more information can be found uh, from our recent publications. And uh, here's our uh, lab members, you know, uh, some members, some uh, uh, from medical students, PhD student, postdoc, visiting scholar, and uh, my students, undergrad student. And uh, our studies are supported by NIH and uh, MTF and AU Foundation. Thank you for your attention.